أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأحمد الله فانك الله continue as well with the قصص الأنبياء we have reached the story of Lut عليه الصلاة والسلام after بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شيخ عبد الرحمن السعدي رحم الله يسد وقصة لوط عليه الصلاة وقصة لوط عليه الصلاة والسلام نعم تبع لقصة إبراهيم لأنه تلميذه وقد تعلم من إبراهيم. So Lot عليه الصلاة والسلام was from the students of Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام and he has learned from him. So that is why after we finish the story of Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام he mentioned the story of Lot وقد تعلم من إبراهيم عليه الصلاة والسلام وقصة لوط لوط عليه الصلاة والسلام وكان من منزلة الإبن and he was like a son to Ibrahim he was learning from him benefiting from him فنبأه الله بحياة الخليل وأرسله so Allah عز وجل clarified to him the life of Khalil Al Khalil meaning Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam and sent him to a village or to a, an area called Sodom Naam, which is in Palestine an area a village called Sodom in Palestine وكانوا مع شركهم بالله يلوطون يلوطون بالذكور and with, along with the shirk with Allah they used to they used to have relations or sexual relations with and men with men and women with women so here men with men they used to do they used to have relations which is uh, يعني sodomy وَلَمْ يَسْبِقْهُمْ أَحَدٌ إِلَى هَذِهِ الْفَاحِشَةِ And no one preceded them in this evil, he says. Because it was considered to be abnormal. The norm is the man to marry a woman. That was the norm. And not a man to be with a man. So Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'di, rahmahullah, he said that along with their shirk, they had this uh, act that they practiced amongst themselves. فَدَعَاهُمَ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ Notice, he said, he called them to the worship of Allah. First and foremost, he called them to what? Tawheed. So here we have an ill of society, he says, whereby the people are doing that which is against the Quran, that which is against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to be upon. And against what Ibrahim والسلام, called him to, and against what Lot والسلام, called him to. But look, Lot والسلام, is addressing first and foremost Tawheed. And this is a reply to those who say, you, you know, you're wasting your time talking about Surah Thalatha, talking about Tawheed. We have certain ills in society, we have certain situations in society to deal with our community, our situation, our. without realizing that the Anbiya began with Tawheed. Began with the ibadah to Allah, began with ikhlas. And with that, once they come to know the reality of worshipping Allah alone, they will fulfill what Allah commands them to do. So he called them to, first and foremost, to worship Allah alone. And he warned them from this uh, mischief, he says. فَلَمْ يَزْدَادُ إِلَّا عُتُوًا وَتَمَادِيًا فِيمَا هُمْ فِيهِ But this only made them increase in what they were upon. So basically they didn't listen to Lord alayhi salatu salam. وَلَمَّا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ هَلَاكَهُمْ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed to destroy them, أَرْسَلَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ He sent the angels. The angels. And they were the same angels that passed by Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. In the, as guests remember in the story of Ibrahim he had angels as guests 
and he served them and at that point they said we, were, we are going to Sodom yani the village of Sodom in order to destroy the, the inhabitants of that village because of their disbelief first and foremost and thereafter them turning away in this manner of sodomy so he said so Shaykh Abdurrahman al-Sa'li said that the angels they passed by Ibrahim والسلام, and they mentioned the affair that they were going to destroy a people because of what they are doing but Ibrahim والسلام, because of his gentleness his kindness his mercy and his he was discussing Naam was discussing the affair with the angels and Allah said inna fiha lutan qalu nahnu a'lam he said if you destroy them lot is amongst them basically don't destroy them because lot is amongst them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we know who is amongst them we are more aware of who is amongst them than you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not destroy lot with the people of Sodom rather he commanded him to leave with his family نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا فِيهَا لِنُنَجِّيَنَّهُ وَأَهْلَهُ أَجْمَعِينَ Such that we may save him and his family altogether. Surah Al-Ankabut verse 32. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ أَعْرِضْ عَنْ هَذَا O Ibrahim, turn away from what you're saying. Don't. This is, we know what we are doing. We know that we are there to punish these people. Uh, for what they have done إِنَّهُ قَدْ جَاءَ أَمْرُ رَبِّكَ Indeed the Lord of your Lord has come وَإِنَّهُمْ آتِيهِمْ عَذَابٌ غَيْرُ مَرْدُودٌ So it's already been willed that these people will be destroyed So stop, desist O Ibrahim for indeed the punishment is going to be upon them and it's not going to be repelled غير مردود It's not going to be stopped so then the angels continued towards Sodom and they went towards that village in order to fulfill the command of Allah Ta'ala and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Hada yawmun asib. it was not an easy day it was a day of destruction a day of of turning the whole village upside down because of what they do what they do وَقَعَ مَا خَافَ مِنْهُ فَجَاءَهُ قَوْمُهُ يُهْرَعُونَ إِلَيْهِ يُرِيدُونَ فِعْلَ الْفَاحِشَةِ بِأَضْضِيَافِ لُوط so when the guests of Lut came they continued the people of Lut before the punishment came they wanted to continue to do fahisha this this evil act as Allah mentions يَا قَوْمِ هَاُلَاءِ بَنَاتِ هُنَّ أَطْهَرُ لَكُمْ to the extent that Ibrahim والسلام, said to them these are my daughters don't do what you are doing men with men these are my daughters As, and here this is not actually him saying take my daughters no Lot والسلام, did I say Ibrahim? this is a mistake Lot والسلام, said these are my daughters he's not actually he knows they're not going to take the daughters anyway Sheikh Sa'id al said he knows they're not going to take the daughters but he only said that Naam. he only said that to them as a proof against them that in reality as Allah says لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا لَنَا فِي بَنَاتِكَ مِنْ حَقَ and they themselves the people of Lot people of Sodom they themselves says you know إِنَّكَ لَا تَعْلَمُ مَا نُرِيدُ you know what we want we don't want your daughters Rather, we want to continue doing what we want to do, which is sodomy. That is mentioned in Surah Hud, verse 79. And also, he said that the punishment أَحَدُهُمَا قَوْلُ هَؤُلَى إِبَنَاتِ يُشِيرُ إِلَيْهِنَّ إِشَارَةَ الْحَاضِرِ ثَانِيًا هَذَا الْإِطْلَاقُ عَلَى زَوْجَاتِهِمْ لَا نَظِيرَ لَهِ وَأَيْضًا النَّبِيُّ إِنَّمَا هُوَ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْأَبْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِهِ لَا لِلْكُفَّارِ 
والمحذور الذي الذي توهموه يزول بما ذكرنا وأنه يعلم أنه لا حق لهم فيه so Lut عليه الصلاة والسلام he knows that they have no right in his daughters rather he said that is a proof against them he's not saying to them take my daughters instead of the men that you are using in 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 your relations but rather this is a proof against them وَإِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ مُدَافَعَتُهُمْ مُدَافَعَتَهُمْ بِكُلِّ طَرِيقٍ but rather he just wants to repel them by every means possible by every means possible and then he said فَاشْتَدَّ الْأَمْرِ بِلُوتِ the affair became very difficult for Lot and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued and mentioned لَوْ أَنَّ لِي بِكُمْ قُوَّةً أَوْ آوِي إِلَى رُكْنٍ شَدِيدٍ he said, if I had even a quwa, some ability to repel what you're doing, or ability to have some strength, because he knew that what they were doing is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was aware of, and it, and it was in reality causing mischief, causing harm to the society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in Surah Hud and I'm going to just mention it now Allah ya Rabb Alhamdulillah just get the uh, uh, translations better so that's Surah Hud verse 80 he said in that story of Hud alayhi salatu salam would that I had strength to overpower you because he was not able to overpower them what they were doing or that I could betake myself to some powerful support to resist you. They, meaning the messengers, said, O oh Lord, verily we are the messengers from your Lord. So that's where the angels came and they mentioned what they were going to do. That the punishment shall not reach you. We're going to punish them, but the punishment shall not reach you. So travel with your family in a part of the night and let not any of you look back but your wife will remain behind because she had some sympathy for them and she yani, excuse, made excuses for them verily the punishment which will afflict them will afflict her and she turned to them indeed morning is their appointed time is not the morning near so the morning the next morning the punishment is going to happen yes it is true he called upon his Lord. He wants Allah to help him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him with strength. The strength of sending angels in order to destroy the people who turned away. The people who did not want to listen to his call. Because first and foremost of their shirk associating partners with Allah. And secondly because of the, what they practiced in their society. So when our commandment came. فَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا جَعَلْنَا عَالِيَهَا سَافِلَهَا We made, we turned the whole town of Sodom, which is in Palestine, upside down. And rained on them stones of baked clay in a well-arranged manner, one after another. So that after the whole village was turned upside down, they were pelted with hard clay. Marked from your Lord, مُسَوَّمَةً عِنْدَ رَبِّكْ وَمَا هِيَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ بِبَعِيدٍ And they are not ever far from the polytheists, from the oppressors. Meaning this punishment reached the kuffar, the disbelievers, who disbelieved in Allah, who disbelieved in the, in the uh, monotheism, in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, Shaykh al-Sa'di rahmah says, the greatest delil that this fahisha, that this evil act is from the most evil of acts and of sodomy being from the most evil of acts he says is that it, it caused the people who were doing it to have a severe punishment and the punishment is according to the action so because of the severe punishment of a whole village turned upside down that shows you that the actual act that they did on top of shirk was severe and the one who is trialed with this 
severe act at the same time of their deen not being intact then the reality of good is seen as bad and the reality of bad is seen as good and this shows you the reason the proof of their deviation so yes this was an ill in society in terms of their manner and the people have had deviation in manners but that first and foremost transpired with a deviation in tawheed away from worshiping Allah alone if they had worshiped Allah alone if they had called upon Allah alone if they had relied upon Allah alone if they had fulfilled the commandments of Allah they would have kept away from this but first, first and foremost they fell into shirk and thereafter what was considered to be bad was good in their eyes what was good in their eyes nah what was bad in their eyes was considered to be good so nah basically the affairs were turned upside down in their eyes because deviation starts small Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says deviation starts a hand span then becomes an arm's length then becomes a, a mile then becomes a mile so deviation doesn't start straight away with a, 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 a mile of deviation no it starts small that's why we, we should be careful in the most smallest of affairs not to deviate away from the Sirat al Mustaqim, from the straight path. So in Lut when he said, Ha'ula'i banati hunna at-taharu lakum, these are my daughters, they are more pure for you. They're the ones. Nah, because they came rushing towards him, and since aforetime they used to commit crimes, and that crime is the crime of sodomy, as Allah said in Surah Hud, verse 78. And he said, Oh my people, here are my daughters. And he doesn't mean his own daughters, he means the women of the nation. The, yani, men should go with women. A man should marry a, a, a woman, not a man. And they are purer for you if you marry them lawfully. So fear Allah and disgrace me not with regard to my guests. Is there not among you a single right minded man? Is there not among you? A single right-minded man. So as, as if Lord Ali Sassam was powerless. He did his best to call them. But they didn't listen. They turned away. No. So from the benefits of this story, he says, Shaykh Asadi says, Anna min alamati al-rajul al-rashid Anna huwa al-musaddad Fi aqwali wa fa'ali from the signs of a man that is uh, that is Rashid that does good deeds and is noble the sign of a man that is noble is that he is truthful in his speech and is sincere in his actions because Allah said in the last part of that verse أَلَيْسَ مِنْكُمْ رَجُلٌ رشيد. isn't there amongst you a man that is noble to deviate it in shirk deviating in this uh, in this uh, uh, manner in uh, akhlaq manner in terms of your um, etiquette turning away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you with that a man marries a, a woman lawfully how is it a man marries a man this will stop the nasl, the lineage of Ibn Adam, of the children of Adam. Imagine all the people upon that. How will the, the human race continue? Will there be children if a man marries a man? Will there be children? There will not be children. There will not be children. So you are almost going against that which is natural. What is natural is that a man marries a woman and they have children and they have a family. But if a man marries a man, who's the mother and who's the father? Who's the mother and who's the father? 
or the child grows up confused it says father and father two fathers which child yes they say let's get an adopted child and you will grow up but who's the mother and who's the father they say that you are the one who's sick you because you haven't accepted it you have a phobia you are the one who's sick now, I'm not allowed to have my own opinion am I not allowed to have my own opinion my own belief according to the Quran we believe that this is an abomination an act which is an which is a, an act which does not allow the lineage to continue the progeny to continue children to continue so it is not an act that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded rather he has forbidden and they say no you should be open minded exactly this is the, one of the brothers said Allah created Adam and Eve not Adam and Steve but the point is if we continue uh, if we continue to accept and say this is no problem there's no problem with that then that punishment might come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't feel safe don't feel that khalas because uh, we are not doing it you're safe because if those around you are doing it the punishment of Allah can come and if you're not enjoying good and forbidden the evil you could go with that punishment and yom al-qiyamah yes you'll be raised up upon your intention and saved if you are righteous and sincere you'll be saved but when the punishment comes all fall into that punishment Lot was not did not fall into that punishment because he was enjoying good and forbidden the evil and those with him were enjoying good and forbidden, and forbidden the evil and so they call the people away from this act but if you say this that you disagree with this act it's like you become almost sick You're, you have a phobia so now the sickness the tables have been turned it's not them who are sick but rather it's you who are sick because you want the human race to continue man with the woman and have children but a man with a man the human race will not continue how will it continue and who will be the mother and who will be the father so a noble person is a noble person is one who is noble in terms of his manners and in, in speech and in action and Allah mentioned that isn't Allah there a person who is noble amongst will you? give victory in the end to those who are oppressed and he will punish those who oppress themselves and others because remember this actual act is an oppression of oneself is an oppression oppression of oneself and this act of sodomy until to the, in this time 2017 you'll find many populations have rejected it for example in Belarus, in Poland in Moldova in Bulgaria, in Montenegro in Serbia, in Kenya in Uganda and others have asserted values they wish to preserve and they do not wish this value of sodomy or this uh, way of sodomy to be part of their society so they have rejected it without violence of course we don't call to violence we don't call to people killing uh, innocents and killing people uh, who stray may Allah guide them to the truth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his signs he created male and female as Allah mentioned in surah Surah number 30 verse 21 and of his signs is that he created from you for you for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you affection and mercy indeed in that are signs for a people who give thought so in islam sodomy or homosexuality is treated as a deviation from this natural order of a man and the woman and you will find it also in the previous scriptures in the Torah for example 
you find it also that the Torah makes clear a clear statement that homosexuality is not an acceptable lifestyle or a genuine identity by severely prohibiting its conduct because the story of Lot is also in the Torah and if you pick up the Old Testament that story is illustrated with detail illustrated with detail how the people turned away from the the call of of Lot alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, even in America, up to 1970, homosexuality was officially considered to be a mental disease. Up to when? 1970. You see, we're just around the corner. In America, it was considered to be a mental disease, needing psychological treatment due to intense lobbying and for political reasons. The American Psychiatric Association, APA, removed homosexuality from the official list of mental disorders in 1973. So after three years, they became, you know, bold and they said, it's okay, they're all right, it's not an issue. Homosexuals have lobbied the APA since 1971 in order to allow it, allow homosexuality to continue, allow, allow this act to continue disrupting their meetings grabbing microphones and shouting down any psychiatrist who considered homosexuality to be a mental disorder so the tactics of the 60s anti-war protesters worked the APA caved in and homosexuals used this victory to proclaim that homosexual behavior meaning sodomy is normal despite, despite this partial victory they were unsuccessful in trying to repeal anti-sodomy laws. And in 1986, following a U.S. Supreme Court ruling, Bowers versus Hardwick, which maintained the rights of individual states to criminalize sodomy, they adopted a new tactic relying upon social marketing and propaganda. Over the next 20 years, the financial support, in addition to substantial help from the media, they have been largely successful in their goals to first normalize and then impose homosexual lifestyles upon societies. Upon societies. So, if you do not accept it in society, you're considered to be homophobic. Since they say that homosexuals and gays are identities assumed for cultural and political goals by those who engage in specific behaviors and are not truly distinct persons, then homophobia is also an artificial construct. So if you were to refer, for example, same-sex, different cultures, 1998, published in 1998, on page 7, where they clarify that in reality, those who turn away from accepting this act they are considered to be homophobic they are the ones who are considered to be sick and in reality this act of homosexuality as some doctors have documented that it's a reason for diseases spreading for example a leading US AIDS health service provider has said that hundreds of patrons of gay sex clubs and bathhouses have been exposed to HIV because Los Angeles County officials failed to regulate the venues. And this you can read it. You can read it from an article which was published in 2004 on the 4th of May. And the article, the title of the article is AIDS Group Urges HIV Testing in LA Bathhouses. And that is from Reuters Health showing you clearly that it has been reported and documented that this type of act causes disease and from that disease is HIV which is AIDS which is AIDS and we know in the media they try to bl blame uh, they try to blame other reasons for the spread of AIDS they try to blame, they said it came from Africa they always blame the Africans uh, blame the black people for everything subhanAllah they say it came from Africa and that's where the disease spread. 
And then they even some reports they said it wasn't uh, reality. Is it's actually the monkeys that spread it, that it came from? The monkey can't reply. So if, you know that is what they started saying. So in reality, this uh, act has been documented in history, in newspapers, in the media, as having a reason to cause AIDS. And in fact. Even if you go to mayoclinic.org, which is M A Y O clinic.org, this famous Mayo Clinic, on their website they state men who have sex with men are at increased risk of contracting HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, as well as other sexually transmitted infections, including hepatitis, HPV, herpes. Simplex, herpes simplex, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis. And this you'll find in an article that was written in 2014, on the 15th of August, an article called Health Issues for Gay So this is men documented even men in some famous them. clinics' websites. And Robert Winnett writes in The Telegraph, he said the Health Protection Agency recently calculated that it costs more than 300,000 to treat every person who contracts the disease, including those who go on to develop AIDS. The cost of treating sufferers in the last stages of their lives is particularly high. And that, is public, that was published in uh, 2012 on the 27th of February. And that was under a chapter called Rectum Abuse or Anal Cancer. And disease later. In this book, you will find it in more details. So, if you go back to that chapter or that section, it actually titles the section Rectum Abuse. It's considered to be an abuse of the rectum. Because the rectum has not been created for that, it's for excreting, not for abusing. And so, many. Articles were written even in 2015, and other than that, we found people writing. Now, from a Muslim perspective, we say and we believe that the Quran is against this act. We don't go around killing people, harming people. We don't do that. We're not violent, and this is not what Islam calls to. Rather, we call them to come to common terms, to understand the reality of this act and the reality of stopping the human race continuing that is what Muslims call to call into the reality of diseases spreading and the reality of harms that could be caused with this act and also basic biology and scientific research informs us that anuses and rectums were not designed for repeat abuse and as a result will have a relatively short lifespan because of anal warts settling in and muscles becoming kaput or broken and useless leading to fecal in incontinence and parasitical infections and they lose desirability and become a liability a fertile ground for disease transmission so this in turn fuels promiscuity and the need for more and more partners. Hence, it is logical and rational to anticipate a strong demand for a ready and constant supply of fresh new rectums. Within this context, it makes economic sense. And we have seen this economic sense to try and get the, the age of sodomy lower and lower so that others can be can practice this even at a lower age on January the 20, 2015 January 2015 when the Charlie Hebdo attacks occurred numerous politicians came out and they said we will never give up freedom of speech and they said as David Cameron said it is very important in our countries that we have a freedom of expression. You're allowed to offend people, he said. 
You might not agree with something As often as I see things I do not agree with But I believe in the freedom of speech And the rule of law So they use that In order to allow freedom To, uh, to insult And so on and so forth So therefore as Muslims also We have freedom of speech to Speak out against That which we believe is incorrect That which we believe Is Will cause harm in society Will cause harm In that which Will, uh, will uh, cause Increase in disease So Shaykh Abdurrahman al-Sa'di rahimahullah, Going back to the book He said that nobility Nobility comes from Good speech and good actions And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will Give victory to those who call to good And those who repel evil And those who Clarify the reality Of sins So he enjoys the good And he forbids the evil And he repels the people or, uh, The people who transgress And from the story also we benefit We benefit That We should Be encouraged to enjoy the good and aid in that which brings about good and we should encourage also to repel everything that may cause destruction in society just as it caused the destruction to those people of Lot and that we need to call upon Allah to give us strength just as Lot والسلام, called upon Allah and he said لو أن لي بكم قوة أو آوي إلى ركن شديد he said, if I only had strength, if I only had strength, or to go to that which will give me support to repel what you're calling to, to clarify what you're calling to is, is, uh, uh, is a sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messengers, and they were noble. He sent them to their people in order to call to the truth. And to repel futility And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Was the one Who Aided Lot If he had not aided him The people of Lot Would have killed him They would have killed him And this happened also When they said And this is in verse 91 In Surah Hud Regarding Shu'ib Shu'ib called his people They said to him Walawla rahtuka لَرَجَمْنَاكَ وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْنَا بِعَزِيزٍ Again, they wanted to kill him. And they said, O oh, Shu'ayb, if it wasn't for your rahat, يعني, وَلَوْ لَا رَهْتُكَ Because he was close to Allah. And he was worship, he was a worship of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, Shu'ayb, they said to, O oh, Shu'ayb, we do not understand much of what you say. And we see you weak. It is said that he was a blind man amongst us. So they see, they saw him as being weak. Were it not for your family, we should certain, certainly have stoned you. And he called and them not to worship Allah, that's us. all. Or my people, he said. Is then my family or more, of more weight with you than Allah? And you have cast him away behind your backs. Verily, my Lord is surrounding all that you do. So, which... Shu'aib, they wanted to do the same. They wanted to harm him because they saw him as a man who was weak. Just like the messenger Muhammad said, they wanted to harm him. They saw him a man that was weak. And so as Muslims, Shaykh al-Sa'id al-Rahmullah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نَبِينَ مُحَمَّدَ سَعَسِ بَعَثَ فِي بُعِثَ فِي أَشْرَفِ بَيْتٍ مِنْ قُرَيْشِ Yes. Muhammad was sent to the Quraysh in the most noblest of tribes of Quraysh وَقَدْ رَمَاهُ قَوْمُهُ but then his people turned him away they turned him away and they drove him out of Mecca and they turned to him in enmity and they sat in majalis in sittings conniving planning plotting against him and the call that he called to and you will find this occurring with those who call to good You call to righteousness You call to salvation You call to tawheed Worshiping Allah alone You call to the The way of the messenger You will find 
others will try to repel you and will be at enmity to you. And of course, we don't use violence, but we call with knowledge and we speak with knowledge based upon uh, beautiful preaching. And what was the thing that stopped them? He says, Sheikh Asadi says, what was the thing that stopped them from harming him in the end? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The protection of Allah. So therefore we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Whenever others want to harm us, whenever others want to stop our call to tawheed, whenever others want to discuss with us, we are open for discussion. But without violence. And we call to the Quran, and we call to the Sunnah, and we clarify from their books and from their from their own if you like intellectualists who actually speak out against this act we say to them from your own people we find those who speak out against the cause of sodomy or the reason of sodomy being a reason for uh, diseases spreading and there is, this topic actually is quite detailed and we don't have really uh, uh, much time to go into the, the details of it but the reality is Islam forbids this act we do not go out with violence against those who do it but but Islam calls for the protection of children and those children that are being used in this act with those who try to legitim legitimize these acts. For example, in Holland, the age of consent for this act has been uh, reduced to a much lower age compared to the rest of Europe. And we found many people who were inclined to homosexuality going, traveling to Holland in order to have these relations with these children. And so, Islam calls for the protection of children and the protection uh, of lineage and the protection of one's progeny and this cannot be this cannot continue with this act of sodomy it cannot be it cannot continue with this act of sodomy so this is you'll find this act of sodomy occurring in many countries unfortunately some muslim countries as well whereas indonesia or other than that you'll find many children are used and abused many children are, children are harmed and there are statistics showing that and people have written about it so Islam came to protect the people protect the society with the general benefit of society outweighing the specific benefit of an individual the general benefit of society of tranquility, of peace, of repelling harm takes precedence over uh, any specific individual's needs. And if it means that children are going to be harmed, and they are harmed, then first and foremost, we as Muslims should stand together and refer back to the scriptures, refer back to the Quran, refer back to the exegesis, and clarify to the people that this act in reality was a reason for its people to be destroyed we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and aid us forgive us and make us of those who clarify the truth without fearing the blame of the blamers